And that gets back to the diversification question. Uh, we think diversification is, as practice generally, makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. Diversification is a protection against ignorance. So you may have seen that clip before or even heard the term diversification is for dummies and that's basically what we're going to explore in this video. Is there any truth to that statement? Now Warren Buffett is undoubtedly one of the greatest investors of all time but that being said I don't agree 100% with everything he has to say. But on this point I would be more inclined to agree with him here and that's one of the reasons that Tesla makes up 90% of my stock portfolio. So diversification of course is spreading your money across a number of different companies or different investment vehicles in order to spread your risk. The more companies that you invest in the more you are considered to be diversified and of course you spread your risk out across all them companies. Now spreading this risk often lowers the potential reward that you can have as it's much harder for 500 companies for example to all do very well opposed to one company having the chance to do very well. And the way that this works is let's say them 500 companies that you invest in let's say 100 of them are performing very well but then for that 100 you may have another 100 that are not performing so great but overall they'll balance each other out and you should generally see decent returns and that's essentially what happens in the S&P 500. Of course different companies make up different weightings within the S&P 500 but what you'll find is some companies are doing better than others but overall it leads to a well diversified low risk investment. And with that level of diversification historically you've seen about an 8 to 10 percent return. Now let's look at a scenario where you aren't diversified and for example you find Tesla stock and you decide to go all in on Tesla stock and don't invest in anything else. As an example over the last year period if that is what you had done you would have seen a 56 percent return on your Tesla investment whereas with the S&P 500 you would have seen an 11 percent return. Now of course there are downsides to not being diversified because if you're only in one single company, let's take Tesla again for example, and if things did go the other way where they didn't perform well, you would see quite a big downside on your investment there. Whereas if you were investing in the S&P 500 and one of them 500 companies didn't perform that well, the other companies would keep you afloat and overall your returns would likely still be positive. Something else we can look at here when it comes to diversification is another analogy given by Warren Buffett and I'm paraphrasing slightly here but the general idea is the same. It was along the lines of that you get a punch card for example and you can only make five punches within that card for your whole life and each punch represents one stock that you invest in. If you can only invest in five different companies throughout your whole lifetime you're going to make sure that them five companies first of all you've done a lot of research on and you have the confidence in and second of all have the best potential chance to grow. So you're going to concentrate all your efforts into trying to pick the very best stocks so that each time when you invest in a stock or hole punch that card there's no going back you only have four more chances left after that. Whereas when it comes to diversification and if you're investing in an unlimited number of stocks first of all it's very hard to keep track of them stocks individually and know what's going on with them companies. Sure you can become a bit of a semi expert I guess you could say in the five companies that you're investing in but when it comes to 500 companies it will be very very hard for you to know what's going on in all them 500 companies whereas five or even 10 companies is much more manageable. Now please do remember that this is not financial advice by any means, I'm simply just discussing for educational purposes the differences and advantages I guess to diversifying your investments and also not diversifying your investments. There's another saying which says diversification makes up for ignorance and that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just basically saying that if you don't have enough time to do the appropriate research into stocks and companies and really understand their business, diversification could be for you because it essentially allows you to skip over all of that, pick a well diversified basket of stocks like the S&P 500 and just set it and forget it, invest your money and let it go to work. Whereas if you're investing in a smaller basket of companies there's much higher chance that you could lose more of your investment if you're not staying up to date with what the companies are doing so you can't afford to have much ignorance here when it comes to not diversifying. For me at the minute with my investments what I'm trying to do is grow my capital opposed to preserve my capital seeing as I'm fairly early in my investing journey. So the idea there is I'm trying to invest my money in the best place I can think of that will grow it the most in the next couple of years. Whereas for example if I had already grown my capital to an amount that I believed was acceptable obviously wanting it to continue to grow but not exactly at an exponential rate I would more look to spread my risk and diversify my investments and that's where something like the S&P 500 could come in it's something where you might go a portion of cash a portion of bonds a portion of equities in order to spread that risk a bit more and preserve your capital try and beat inflation but you're not exactly looking to 2x or 3x your money you don't want to take on that level of risk. 
So I find for me at the start of my investing journey, which I've only been in this for maybe two years or so now, that I'm able to take a little bit more risk because I know that hopefully anyway, I'll still have the time to earn more money back if one of my investments doesn't pay off, such as Tesla, for example. But while I would be comfortable and mentally preparing for the eventuality that Tesla may not work out, I still have done a lot of research into Tesla and I wholeheartedly believe that it will do very well and continue to bring me great profits in the coming years. Basically what I'm hinting at here is what I touched on with the more risk, the less you are diversified, but I'm happy to take on that level of risk right now because I think the potential reward is great. So to summarize, for most people, diversification in something like the S&P 500 is a nice level of diversification. It makes up for that bit of ignorance because you don't have to focus on certain stocks and know all the ins and out of what the company are doing. And generally, it's quite tough to beat the index of the S&P 500, so your money is likely in a good place if that's the route you go down. But for those people who like to invest in individual stocks, instead of picking maybe 20 or 30 or even 40 stocks, it may be an idea to try and concentrate your efforts into a smaller number, maybe five, maybe as high as 10 stocks, and just try to build your confidence in them companies and try and make sure that you know the ins and outs of them. And likely your money will perform better for you in companies that you're more confident in than spreading that across a lot of companies who you can't really stay in touch with what they're doing. If you're wondering what platforms I use to invest, I personally use Trading212 where I invest in my individual stocks such as Tesla. You can pick up fractional shares there. And then as well as that, I also use Buck Zero for some S&P 500 investments that I dabble in a bit as well. I'll leave links to both of these platforms down in the description below where you can pick up free shares. Anyway guys, if you could take a second to drop a like on this video, would really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts on diversification and if you yourself have a diversified portfolio or if you're just down the more concentrated route of owning just a couple of stocks. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys in another video.